All right. Not the greatest orientation, but we'll make it work. All right. If I start with my displacement equation, I'm probably going to have to use both of them, and that's fine. Because the whole idea there is, that's another example of where I'm using two different equations that have time, but substituting time out of the equation to make time go away. And just using the displacements and velocities otherwise. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. You can <laughs> okay. it out. It's the button. It's the button. It's open. If you want to do independent ops, do so quietly. Others are trying to learn. Say what you said again. No. Figure it out. It is. You have a photographic? No. You don't? No. How? How do you know? It's like one in a million. Why do you have to do it? Why do my two displacement equations, correct? We're doing that problem, jumping, jumping the sharks. All right, those are my two displacement equations, correct? Okay. In terms of stuff I have or know, final displacement, the number I have, right? I'm sorry, any displacement. Starting displacement. Zero. Let's put my origin here. I'm gonna put my origin here and call that up. That up, up positive and right positive. Up positive, right positive. I'm my origin. With the origin at the base of the jump. Okay. What is my horizontal acceleration? Zero. Horizontal velocity. V not cos and theta t. We were right. Oh my gosh! So I'm not completely, completely wrong. Um, Vertical. I am. What is y? Oh, we're already. Are, are, are we are we good up to here? 1.5. Yes. It's a number I know. Right? Let's call that height of the ramp. Just because I don't like numbers until I need them. So my final this vertical displacement is what? Your final y. It doesn't change. H. I guess. Wait, it does change. What is my final vertical velocity? Zero. Zero. The way I've set up my origin and my reference frame, that is zero. Oh, yeah, and then it's 1.5. That's my height yeah. of the end of my ramp, correct? Yes. That's V not sine. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. sine. Oh, you just said that. <laughs> what, is, what is my acceleration? Oh, G. Negative. Negative G. I define positive as up, right? Yes, I think it's positive. Yes, that up. Oh my god. Is this time? Yes. If you, since you said positive is up, why is, yeah. why not H instead of? Because I start in the positive direction from my origin. Oh, yeah. But that is what we're trying to pay attention to, because a lot of you like to have your origin up here, which is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In that case, if I end up down here, and that's my origin, and I call positive up, and that would absolutely be a negative h. But then my g would be positive, and all this would switch around, and I'd be fine, and my velocity would be the other direction. It would work itself out. But pick a, pick a reference frame and stick with it. Okay? I've picked down here because that's just how I like to do things. I'm calling that positive, I'm calling that positive. So my ending vertical displacement is zero. My starting vertical displacement is a positive h. My starting vertical velocity is a v naught sine theta. My acceleration is negative g. Zero equals h plus v naught sine theta t minus one half g t squared. Now this bothers me some because I have a squared t here and I have no t here, so I can't factor it out. 
So that's annoying. But what am I trying to solve for? B not. Dang it. I did time. Well, time is not a thing I have. Wait, yeah, we can solve for time. I could substitute if I wanted to. We can solve for time on dy. Mm -hmm. So here's a thing I don't know. Thing I know, thing I know. But we don't also have no t. Right. Same thing over here. Thing I know, thing I don't know. Thing I know, thing I don't know. Thing I know, thing I don't know. So t and t and b naught are the two things I don't know. So take your pick. Solve that one. Substitute over here. Solve this and substitute over there. I like solve this. Substitute over there. Oh no! I am doing it right. I'm trying to find B naught. I don't know T, so let's solve for T and substitute. Right? Time equals X divided by B naught cos and theta. They're right by that. Substitute. Zero equals height plus B naught sine theta x over v naught cosine theta, that's convenient. That works out real nice. Minus one half g x over v naught cosine theta squared. Yes. This did. Because my V naught is going to cancel, right. which is going to help me a lot because this is going to be, I'm trying to isolate a V naught, okay. and having V naughts running around all over the place make me nervous. Mm -hmm. But I got a V naught there and a V naught there, they're going to cancel, it's going to go away. Got it. And that's going to simplify to a tangent, that's yeah. going to make my life easier. Do you see that the V naughts cancel? I'm going to move this over to the other side of the equation and flop them. Sorry for the bad tone to share. Everybody see that? Now, I'm trying to write in such a way that this stays on the board. I'm going to rewrite this up here. Okay. Does that look scary? Yes. Okay. This is the habit I want you guys to get into. If that looks scary, try imagining that with numbers. I could not track and find my problem if I get something that makes no sense. I can track this. Now, to make you feel better, is or is not this all numbers that I know? All except for you. You, you know all these. Oh, yeah, all those, yeah. So that's just numbers. I don't have to worry about isolating and factoring. That stuff's all fine. It's, they're just numbers I'm going to punch in later. It's fine. The only thing I've gotten here that I'm worried about is this thing. Everything else is a number. Okay, but what, what if I put it in the other way? You solve that one, substitute it here? Um, the reason I would find that challenging is I think you have to do a quadratic on this one to solve it. I did a square root. And How'd you do a square root with no... If you square rooted this to get time by itself, you're going to end up with a square root of t here. Here. I don't know how to solve this other than a quadratic, which I like to avoid if I can. Well, I want to make sure that you understand why what you're doing won't work or what you did wrong, or am I missing something? So, did you rearrange? 
change this to B H X squared plus B X plus C format? Okay. So I'm having trouble wrapping my brain from here to here because you didn't put this in A squared plus B X plus C format. But let me see if I can do it. Oh, That's going to be your A. Oh, you 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 tried to take square root. Yeah. Just so T by you, itself. you're not though. You got T here and there. You do. You see that? Okay, so you had t squared equals some stuff, but unfortunately t was still in that stuff. So take the square root, doesn't help you. The only way to solve this kind of an equation is, and isolate t is to use the quadratic. It's going to be a rough year. <laughs> the al so one thing that will not change is the algebra. We're going to be doing algebra from here until you guys are done. It's never here. Go memorize these physics facts. Does everybody see that you're not going to solve this without using the quadratic? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I solve this one and plug it in, hopefully some things goes away. Some things go away. And then I'm left with a square root of some kind, maybe. Okay? Now, the only thing I'm worried about, I know, that, I know all these numbers. The only thing here that's not a number is that thing. Mm -hmm. So effectively, I just need to solve for the number. So if you plug numbers, you can eventually figure this thing out. But I hate that, so... So B naught is going to equal, and take as many steps as you need, but I'm going to flop. Thank you. So this is effectively G in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, correct? Yes. yes? I want that in my numerator, so I'm going to cross multiply those things, which is going to put my GX squared up there, and a 2 times the quantity H plus x tan theta down here, correct? Oh, Did I mess anything up? That would be also. I'm, I'm, I missed a cosine somewhere. Where is it? Um, B naught squared. It's down here, correct? Yes. Cosine squared theta. Except then I'm going to take a square root of all that to get B naught, and that's your answer. Okay. Dimensionally, is that correct? That by itself is going to factor out to meters per second, right? No, that's just meters, sorry. Meters per second squared, meters squared, it could be meters cubed per second squared. Those are lengths, which you can get rid of one of these meters. So I'm left with meters squared per second squared, takes for left with meters per second. It is a velocity, I'm good. I'm not, not, I'm not adding any unlike units, I'm not subtracting any unlike units, and my final units end up with the units that I should have, which is length per time. First of all, you see that these are all numbers now. Plug them in. Do you have any issues with the algebra, how I got there? A lot of times these problems, and this will only get even more so as we go on, Things will start to look scary in the middle of the problem. If you're confident with your setup, keep pushing the algebra, especially in dynamics, things will just start to disappear and simplify. Wait, why wouldn't it be flipped the other way? Like this this came up. Right. This is effectively all this stuff over one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm cross multiplying. Mm -hmm. So that went up, mm -hmm. the V naught did, and I brought it up and I plopped them on them then. Oh, but that went up. Okay, that went up. This came down yeah. to the two times that stuff times the cosine squared. That stayed in the top, yeah. and then I had to take the square root because it was the v naught squared. Yeah. Again, Don't if you need to do that in eight steps, please do. So, As you do all eight steps over and over again, you'll eventually get more comfortable with doing that. The way I double check the fact I didn't screw anything up while I was doing all that is doing the dimensional analysis. If I screwed something up in the algebra, it'll most likely show up in the dimensional analysis. So, I'm not so, but, sorry. Uh, v not sine, or sine, oh, sine divided by cosine, is that tangent? That is tangent. Now, your AP exam equation sheet has trig functions on it. It does not have trig identities. Notice, if you still had sine over cosine here, you could still solve this problem. Yeah. 
As a matter of fact, they would cancel one of the cosines, and instead of a tangent cosine squared, you'd have a sine cosine. Yeah, okay. Which would be a double angle formula that you could substitute the sine of two, but again, it doesn't matter because you can use those other versions and still plug in the numbers and still get the right answer. Okay. The, the trig identity can help you simplify some. It is not necessary to solve this problem. I don't believe there's ever been an actual, there might be some in your book that require trig identities, but you have more resources available to you when you're doing homework. I don't think there's any problems on the AP exam that will require you to know a trig identity. If you know some, it will help you. Sine of the cosine is tangent. Sine squared plus the cosine squared is equal to one. That comes in handy a lot. Does everybody understand the setup of this problem? Does everybody understand the approach of solving the simpler equation and substituting out the thing I don't want? Namely time. I had an equation here that had two that had two unknowns. I had an equation here that had the same two unknowns. Two equations, two unknowns. Substitution fixes that. I solve one to plug into the other. I don't like solving quadratics if I can avoid them, so I solve this one first and substitute it over there. Now, if you want to do the quadratic and the substitute over here, it'll work. It's a little trickier because you got to pay attention to your, you're going to have that whole plus or minus thing, right? you got to pay attention to which one makes sense, which one's right. It requires a solid grasp of what the math is telling you about the problem. Is everybody good on this one? That black is going to be hard to erase when you get started. Hmm. Now, I will... I see some of you working your brains. Um, Do not memorize this problem, because the odds of you seeing this problem are pretty slim. Possible? Sure. Likely? No. Especially now that we went over. Especially now that we went over. <laughs> but if you understand the concepts, the techniques, the approaches, the applications, the equations, mm -hmm. you can tackle anything I throw at you. This is as hard a problem as you're going to see on the exam tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is as hard as you're going to get. I think. Okay. okay. If you understand these concepts and apply them to this problem or simpler ones, you should be good. Yeah. So I was trying to catch up, but I was a little behind because I did it a different way. So um, how did you get to the square root part? From, like I just Here? Yeah. Because when I rearrange all this, I get V naught squared equals all this stuff without the square root. And I just take the square root of both sides. From here, I think I got it. I think I got it. you good? Yeah. And again, please, write out all the steps that you need to. I need to. <laughs> Multiply v naught squared across first, if you want to. Then divide everything by all the other stuff. So you get everything on one side. Then take square root. I guess it's only three, it's not too bad. No, the, the numerator. Everything's not no, here. Um, you multiply all of that by h plus. Hang with me. Can I, can I erase the picture of the problem? Yes. Uh, that black looks good, but it's hard to erase. While I'm doing this, what is the acceleration of an object in free fall? G that way, whatever, whatever you know, it can be positive or negative, depending on what you call your roughly training, right? Does acceleration in my vertical direction affect anything in my horizontal? No.
I have a sum over here, so I have to be somewhat careful. When I just have products and quotients, it's way easier. When I, when I have when I have a sum or a difference, I have to be a little careful about how I cross multiply and stuff, right? Do you see that this value over here is the same as that? Right? If I had that, if I multiply both sides of this equation by D, that's the same thing as bringing the D over here. If I multiply both sides of the equation by B, that's the same thing as bringing B over there. I call it cross multiplying, but it's not really. It's whatever. You bring it over from the other side. You bring it up. That's what I'm doing. All I care about is this. I could bring that whole thing up, but then I'm going to end up dividing by this stuff. All I want is that piece. And since it's a product, I can get away with it. I'll have a little more trouble with this piece because it's a, a, a sum. But for that thing, I can multiply both sides of that equation by v not squared. In my mind, I'm just bringing it up here, but multiply both sides of v not squared. effectively divided by one. Right? And now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by that quantity. I have to do the whole quantity because it's a sum, right? I can't divide by a piece of it. I got to divide by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I divide by that quantity. When I divide both sides by that quantity, it effectively puts it there, right? And just the same thing as bringing it down that way. Might be. Been wrong before. You buy that? Then mm -hmm. I take the square root. Is the number reasonable? It's close on a square root. My, it is square I did a, I did the problem two different ways and I got the same answer, but the problem okay. was saying it's wrong. Make sure you look at the right unit and chapter and number and all that kind of stuff. Part B. It's part B. Wait, how come your cosine, your cosine is squared? It's always been squared. Remember, remember that t squared I had out there? One half, or minus one half gt squared? I squared t. t was a cosine from my x equation. That's where cosine gets squared. Cosine piece came out of your x, your horizontal displacement, and when you substitute that in for t squared, yeah, the cosine squared. got squared. Yeah. The cosine squared for the same reason so v not was squared. Broke, I accidentally wrote my v not squared down again, which is not one. Okay. You're right with that problem. Yes, sir. Other problems you want to go over, or misconception questions you want to go over? All the misconceptions. So. I end up having to beat this drum every year until it finally sinks into stubborn skulls. You cannot memorize your way through this. Cannot. If you have an eidetic memory and you go look at every physics problem ever invented by man, then maybe. Every point one. I don't have an eidetic memory. If you do, and you want to go look at every physics problem, I don't even look, you don't have time to look at every physics problem in the blank. Right? You've got to under, there's only three equations. Three more with the trig equations, right? If you understand them and know how to apply them and can do some algebra, you can handle anything I'm gonna throw at you. I try to give you enough sampling of problems to get enough practice to get good at that. Mm -hmm. If you have done that and taken advantage of those opportunities and taken advantage of the rework to learn what mistakes you have made, then you ought to be well positioned to do well. If you're trying to memorize your way through, Sorry. It's hard to watch. Yes. Question or discussion? Sure. Okay. Other problems, other questions? Misconceptuals or problems? Yes. Okay. Missed you guys. We have a question back here. There's going to be like multiple choice questions. Yes. Roughly half the exam multiple choice. I didn't do that.
And that doesn't mean the first time. That doesn't mean the first way you will have the same number of questions in multiple choice. So I don't you will have a greater number of questions that are multiple choice, but the point value is such that it'll work out roughly 50 50. You will have a fewer number of. My brain just left me. <laughs> There's a misconception question, multiple choice up front. Um, free response, sorry. There is a lower number of free response questions in the back, but they're longer, take longer, and have more point values assigned to them. So they're roughly equal 50 50. Vector and that is fair game. A vector addition problem is fair game, as is relative velocity. Because those, those tend to be vector problems. On the Yes. Can you just tell the question to No, I cannot. I have way too much personal integrity to do that to you. Yes. Um, to be clear, are you still working this problem? Um, sort of. He's like a dog with a bone until he gets a number. This is what equal to <laughs> this, right? You can calculate it that way. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. I, I want to make sure my number is right, because yep. the back of the book says it's wrong, but I did it two different ways. And got well, I don't know you didn't make a mistake. You may have made the same mistake twice, and I don't know if the back of the book is correct. Well, I know it's not that. Okay. I, didn't do that the first time. I plagiarized this problem out of the book, but I changed the number and it was five years ago. So, yeah. I'm trying to wait. I'm waiting for Nathan yeah. to count. You will have answers. a. You will have one problem that is of similar difficulty that you probably won't have to. Do. <laughs> Michael, why are you here? Yeah. Oh my God. Leave. Go away. Yeah. He likes to get grades too. He makes us feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Why? What's he gonna do if we do? Because you're envious. <laughs> you I am. Oh my God. I have no doubt that some of you are regretting possibly having selected AP. I am, I am at least reasonably confident that you'll be over it by the end of the year. This is, this is the, <laughs> Whatever finished, I won't regret it. <laughs> I think you'll be happy once, you, once you're done. You'll be happy. Your problem solving skills and algebra skills will be off the chart, and your standardized test taking skills will be off the chart compared to what you were for this class. Um, Other specific um, questions? So, okay. Uh, just you're, and you already had one, so. We have another specific question while we're waiting. Yeah, what's Number the. Can you super calculate the answer real quick? No, that's what you Wait, question 10? H was what, 1.5? Ooh! Get out of here, kid. Do you get it? Yeah, that's apparently. But I don't believe him still. But you want to understand where you went wrong. If you'll stick around after Rails is done. I can't, I believe right now. Oh. Work. <laughs> Bring it on. I mean, I'll send you my workout. Tell so you what. <laughs> take a picture. <laughs> Ian, Ian, exactly. take a picture and text it to me. I'll look at it later and tell you where we're wrong. You got a bad calculator. Hold on. <laughs> Your calculator. Right. So far, one zero. And he did the exact same thing I did, though. So it's a probably. Just better. Might be a calculator <laughs> operator. Reset your calculator. It might be a order of operations problem. It might be a calculator operation problem. Are you in degrees? <laughs> Wait, no, I'm in radio. Oh my god. <laughs> Rookie oh mistake. My god. Oh. Rookie mistake. Rookie. I don't usually use numbers, radios. I was, in I, I was in calculus. Numbers boy use radios. There are things <laughs> for which radians are required, and you will do those things in this class this year. I know we didn't do them last year, but we didn't do circular motion last year. When we do circular motion, radians will be necessary. Oh my god. What? At least I know I was right the whole time. <laughs> what? Oh, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Oh, gravity did. It's okay. We love gravity. It's gravity's fault. <laughs> Alright. Other than probably right. Do we have another specific question in the hopper? Problem 10? It's misconceptual 10. I just want to make sure I don't like that stuff. I'm going to fix that now. You would have only got like a cutoff. Like, you would just put like a basic. The monkey. The monkey. 
All right, why are we why are we crashing cats and uh, shooting monkeys? All right, if we can keep the noise down, I would appreciate it. I'm not sure how the audio is carrying on the video, so. All right. A hunter is aiming horizontally at a monkey who is sitting in a tree. The monkey is so terrified when it sees the gun. Okay, I thought it was bow and arrow, but it doesn't specify. Okay. A gun that it falls off the tree. At the very instant the hunter pulls the trigger, what will happen? At the very instant? Yes, the monkey lets go as soon as he shoots. Is it like this? Yep. Like and, 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 and this is this is this is the hands that she's making that Veronica's doing. The monkey, the monkey falls. The bullet also falls. What is the acceleration due to gravity in the monkey? Same. What is the acceleration due to gravity on the bullet? Oh, oh, I meant they're the same. Then. They're the same. Yeah. What is the initial vertical velocity of the bullet? I'm fast. Vertical velocity. Oh, <laughs> Zero. <laughs> what is the initial vertical velocity of the monkey? Zero. Zero. Yeah, you, you have to set those starting conditions in your mind, right? Because it may not be the fact that the vertical velocity is starting at zero. If he shoots at an angle, it's a different answer, right? Yeah. Because there's another problem I've seen where the, the thing's up here and they're shooting at an angle. This starts at zero, but accelerates. This has the same acceleration, but it doesn't start at zero. It's actually shooting up. So that will do this, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're aiming right at it, if it's horizontal, it does say horizontal, right? Yes. If you aim horizontally at something and it drops at the instant you shoot, they're going to do this. They're going to, their vertical displacement is going to go down at the same rate. Okay? You will still hit the monkey. Dead monkey. It's a very violent physics book. No, it's a monkey. This ain't Christian. What else you guys got? Problem 41. Two planes approach each other head on. Each has a speed of that. They spot each other when they initially that far apart. How much time do the pilots have to take evasive action? That's a valid relative speed problem. Did you want to do that problem, or you just ask me if it was, re if it was, rel if it was relevant and valid? <laughs> it is relevant to the test. Yes. Two planes approach each other at 780 kilometers an hour. It looks purple. Plane A. Can everybody see that sort of kind of? There's a glare on the screen right there, too. Plane A is going that way at 780 kilometers an hour. Plane B is of equal magnitude, opposite direction. At least that's why I read the question. Two planes approach each other head on, each has a speed of 780 kilometers an hour. This is all relative to the ground. And they spot each other when they are initially 10 kilometers apart. How much time do they have to take evasive action? I assume evasive action of any kind will prevent collision. They don't give a response time. They, they apparently spot each other from 10 kilometers away. So we're assuming that as long as they take action at the last possible instant, they don't provide me other, any other information about delay times or reaction times or how far apart they have to be when they can maneuver and still be safe. They give me that information, right? So I have to make the assumption that any evasion up until the moment of collision will prevent calamity. Okay? So this is a relatively straightforward relative speed problem. How do I do? Equation. Yes. You could. Yes. Uh, so in the old days of kinematics, mm -hmm. we could use the displacement equation for each of these, right? Mm -hmm. And set the displacement equal and find out how much time that took and that sort of thing, right? We could do that. 
and the fact that they're both 780 would make that easier than it could be. If I didn't give you 780 kilometers an hour in each of them, if they were different, that would make that approach harder. There's an easy way to do it with relative speed. If I'm going 780 that way and the other guy's going 780 that way, what does this guy look like he's doing relative to this guy? 1560. 1560. If I'm traveling that way, if I'm traveling this way at 780 kilometers an hour, the entire rest of the world looks like 780 kilometers that way plus whatever else they're doing. This guy is already going 780 kilometers that way from my perspective because I'm flying at him that fast. In addition to that, oh, by the way, he's also contributing 700 kilometers an hour. If you want to think vector addition, it's that guy sees the entire world doing that. So it's that plus that is what, is what this guy sees. And I can put, your, you can put yourself in perspective of either one of these guys. Because when they collide, they both see the same thing. Okay. So the relative velocity is 1560 kilometers per hour. And the thing is, this approach will work even if their speeds are different. They didn't both have to be 780 to take this approach. It'll still work this simply. Right? Then it's just a... Let me, let me do the actual thing here. Distance equals speed times time, right? And the thing I'm looking for is time, so it's distance over velocity, which is going to be my 10 kilometers divided by my 1560 kilometers per hour. And please don't give me an answer in 0 .0003 hours. Anybody will watch the measure 0 .0003 hours? No. I know this is going to give me a ridiculously small number, correct? It's 10 divided by 1560. That's a small number. But it's going to be in units of what? Kilometers per hour. No. It's a time. It better not be kilometers an hour. It's a time. It's hours. The kilometers cancel. Okay, everybody pay attention. This is dimensional analysis stuff. It will save your butt. Kilometers divided by kilometers cancels. I've got hours in the denominator of the denominator. Multiply the top and bottom by hours, you get hours in the top, right? It's hours. Your answer is in hours. It's going to give you a small number, so just do yourself a favor. 3,600 seconds divided by an hour. That's it. 23.1 is a reasonable number per second. If you ended up with, you know, 506 seconds, it might not be very tough in a minute. So, yeah. I'm just saying, nobody measures time in 0. .000 hour units. Does everybody see why this is simple than setting up a displacement equation and solving it? Yep. Uh, Using relative speed, yes. If you wanted to solve the kinematics purely, you would have to set up a displacement equation for plane A, you have to set up an equ equation displacement for plane B, and then set them equal to each other and solve for time. Which will work just fine, it's just more painful and harder. Takes more time. Make your life easy. I don't know how late I'll be up tonight, but if you have questions, you can shoot me text and I'll wait I'll try to farm. Let's do it. Other questions? Let's do it. Wait, we should do one with out of pictures so that we can, like, know how to draw it. Okay, let's do it. Sure. Okay, then let's. Five, four, eight, two. 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 Four, eight, I need a number. Who's picking? Fifty-one or fifty and fifty-one are both level three problems. Fifty does not have a picture. Okay, I think I'm gonna do ones that are like the majority of the times. How many AP have questions But if you have level three problems, you're gonna get the experience you need to do those. 
lesser problems, but you also get to this. Look at this, I'm starting to smart. Yeah, but I just feel like I'm not learning anything. Same problem. Okay, then let's just do it. Let's just do it. What's up? Uh, can you fill this out? You can give me one. Did we sell out number 50? Do you need that yeah. filled out right this second? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Why? Football. Oh, it's for tomorrow. I'll take you out. It's okay. Come back. I will. It'll take 20 seconds. It should read it. It shouldn't even take 20 seconds. I'll write the Okay, I'll read it. An airplane. Because expending my time is one of my favorite things. I know, right? An airplane. I'll read it and make it the Because I have so much extra time laying around. Right. Yeah. I'm going to read the question. An airplane whose airspeed is 580 kilometers. Kilometers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's the difference between a kilometer and a kilometer? Huh? There is. There actually is. Oh, is that like the thing where you hit the... What's the difference between a micrometer and a micrometer? One is a unit of measure, the other one is? The other one is a, a device that measures it, ah. yes. Oh my gosh, you're so smart. A what? And, oh my God, you're so smart. A micrometer is a length. A micrometer is something that measures things in micrometers. Oh. Okay, 580. Okay. An airplane whose airspeed is 580 kilometers an hour is supposed to fly in a straight path. It's very similar. It's actually most similar to that other problem you guys had where the airplane was flying due south with a north a northeast blowing wind. Mm -hmm. This is very similar. Did I get that wrong? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want help drawing the picture? Alright, I'm gonna try real fast. Wait, did I get An airplane okay. is supposed to fly thirty eight degrees north of east. Yeah. Yeah. North of east. 38 degrees. <laughs> but a steady 82 kilometer per hour wind is blowing from the north. Here's the difference between this problem and the other problem you guys did. The other problem said the plane was doing this and the wind was doing this. That is not what this problem is saying. This problem is saying the plane wants to do this and the wind is doing that. So before you had a plane vector and a wind vector and you had to figure out the result was, which was that. This one's telling you I want my result to be that direction. Question. Why is the vector of the wind not like... I haven't added them yet. I'm just showing the orientation of them. I'm, I'm not adding my vectors yet. Good question. Good question. I've not done any vector addition yet because, again, I don't have a plane vector and a wind vector adding together to result. I have a wind vector and a desired result that I'm trying to figure out what the plane vector needs to do to make that happen. Right? So I gotta be careful how I draw this. So I've just drawn the vectors in a raw form here from some common origin. I'll figure out my orientation here in a second. Good question. Do you understand why? Mm -hmm. In what direction should the plane head? So do you understand? They're asking me for the vector that I'm going to do as my plane that the wind will add to to end up with that. Do you see that? I'm sorry? Is it vector subtraction? 
sort of. I, I, got, I, got, or, I, got, I got to draw the picture first. I'll, I'll be able to talk about it more. But there, there's one other, give me one second. There's one other thing I wanted to point out here. This is the direction I want to go. The magnitude they gave me is the speed I am going. So this is weird, right? They've given me the direction of the resultant, but the magnitude of the input. Do you see the difference? The wind speed they gave me was 580. I have a wind speed of 580 kilometers an hour that I can fly. I need to pick a direction to go to with this vector that when added to this vector will result in a direction of that. And the magnitude will be something else that I don't know yet. I can calculate it later. I'm probably not going to care about it. I'm just trying to achieve this direction. Does everybody see that? So, generally speaking, if I want to do this, but the wind is pushing me there, how am I going to have to fly? That way. That way. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I want to find the vector. First of all, so I'm going to have a plane vector to which I'm going to add that vector to end up there. Mm -hmm. This is how I reason my way through this. So my wind vector is there. My plane vector has to be there. My plane vector has to be that way so that when the wind pushes me that way, I end up going that way. The magnitude of this one is 580. The magnitude of the wind was 82. The direction of my resultant is 38. The direction of my wind was straight south. So this is going to be a subtraction problem because I still need to do x and y components on my vector addition in order to make it work, right? Because the hypotenuse of a triangle is never the sum of little x. That's where we started all this stuff way back when. I'm going to redraw this just so it's more clear and get that confused with the wind. We don't know the magnitude, we know the direction. So don't you just have to do like a thing? A thing. Like a tower? Oh yeah. There's a hint in this problem that we're gonna take advantage of. It says use the law of signs. I would argue. You're trying to find the R, right? You're trying to find the direction that the plane wants to fly. You want to try it. We're trying to find that direction there. Because I am going that speed. Oh, period. so we don't know the. I know the length of this vector. I know the length of that vector. I don't know the length of this vector. I know the direction of that vector. I know the direction of that vector. I don't know the direction of that, that wait, vector. Where did we start? Which one did we start with? Oh, wait. I already know it. I got it. Sorry. What does the law of signs say? What does the law of signs say? And they give you an appendix number to help you out. I think I remember what it says. I think it says the sign of the angle is to the opposite side as the sign of any other angle. That same triangle is to their opposite side. We'll look it up though. Sure. If you have any triangle, it doesn't have to be a right triangle. The sign of this angle is to that side as the sign of that angle is to that side as the sign of that angle is to that side. I think that's what it says. That's the sort of thing I would give you in this problem like this if you needed it. I remember the law of cosines. I think I have the law of sines.
Yes, sine alpha is the A, as sine beta is to B, as sine gamma is to C. I would argue you could also use the law of cosines in this one, but they suggest the law of sines. Let's go with that one. What does the law of sines do for us here? And think, think about this triangle. Do I know any angles in this triangle? If that's 38, what's that? Yeah, that's the sign we need to find. Mm -hmm. So because we have that, we need to find that. Yeah, because we can do off, off, we can take it. Yeah, if that's so 38, that's 42, 52, 52. 180 degrees, right? These, these are complementary? Oh, yeah. Because this comes down here and makes a right angle. Right. That's complementary with that, so that's got to be 52. Right. If that's 52, what's that? 128. You all had geometry, right? I'm trying to figure out where we can apply the law of signs. Is it the whole thing of the triangle? What is that? No, we got, we got, so, so yeah. So that's 128. I've got that length. I've got that length. I can get that angle. I can get, I can get that angle. Oh, yeah. Because we have. I figured out what that angle was, and I already know that side. So the sine of 128 is to 580 as the sine of alpha is to 82. You buy that? So solve for alpha. Are you lost? Do you understand how I got 52 here? You understand I got 128 there. Now I'm just recognizing the fact that I have one angle with this side here, which gives me the ratio that will apply to any angle with its side in this triangle. Recognizing oh, I have yeah, this yeah, side. Is that the thing that you were talking about? Yeah, a lot of signs. Yes. And that's something if I give this to an exam, I'd give you that law. This law. So if I take 128 mm -hmm. sine, positive number, good, divided by 580, equals times 82, inverse sine, 6.396, so 6.4 degrees. Does such a small angle make sense? I'm flying at 580, this is pushing me to 82. Yeah. My flight is definitely driving the problem here, but it's gonna have some effect. So I'm going to skew a little bit to the right. So this little angle here is 6.4. Added to that 38. Gives me 44.4. So something's happening and I don't know why I'm not getting that number. Why are you not getting the 6.4? Yeah. 128 sign, what do you get? Um, 0 0.7. Yep, divide by 580. Seems about right. Times 82. Times 82. Um, 0 0.1192. Inverse sine. Inverse? Because the sine of the angle equals all that stuff you just did. Oh, so then I do inverse sine. Inverse sine. Yep. Uh, You've gotten the ratio. Now you need the angle that goes to that ratio. Wait, did you just do that in your head? No. I, I will teach you how to do trig functions in your head if you want. No, no, no. That's okay. That calculator's my best friend. Is that your best friend? If you had to spend eight hours a day 
doing trig functions in your head and the lives of you and 150 other people dependent on you doing it right, do you think you'd get good at it? Yes. <laughs> Take comfort in that. Okay. 38 plus 6.4. That gamma angle that I have up there that I'm having a hard time with the pen on is 44.4. North of East, thank you. Is that how they ask the question? In what direction should the plane head? 44.4 degrees north of east. Can you like I also don't know Yeah. I was trying to match the color with the picture. It's not cooperating. Let's see how this one's doing. That green angle there is what I'm calling gamma. Oh, that I gamma said angle. Use the law of sign. Now you could do this problem without the law of signs. The law of signs makes it a lot easier. Because without the law of signs, you'd have to take that vector is all vertical. You would have to write a trig function for each of these. But since you only know the magnitude of one and only know the angle of the other, you're going to get some weird combination of equations that you have to solve for that can be painful. You gotta know the trick to it, and that makes it easier, but once you know the trick, it's not too bad. But they give you a hint, so it helps. Do we have other questions? If you have a relative speed problem, you will not have more than one. Wait. You absolutely will have a ballistics problem and likely more than one. Oh. It will likely be a variety of level ground versus horizontal launches off of buildings versus non horizontal launches from a hike. I would give you the law of signs with this. If you need any trig identities, I would give you those. Yeah. Oh, or in the morning. Wait, swim still? Swim thing? I still need volunteers for the meet next week. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there? Yeah. Can you sign up, Ms. Felbert? That meat has moved several times. I believe it's in its final place. If it doesn't happen next week, I think we're running out of time to have water that the kids are willing to get in. It's getting chilly. The absolute best way to study for any of these exams is to diligently review your homework. Understand what you got wrong. Understand what you got right and why it was right. Understand what you got wrong and why it was wrong. Understand why the right way to do that problem is the right way to do that problem. Know the equations and how to apply them. And then do algebra. Are the reworks due tomorrow? Yes. C and D. C and D are due tomorrow. The keys are posted. Uh, I understand this is painful or has been so far for some of you up to this point. Let me see, I should have done my rework If you continue to struggle, it does get better. Which direction is Dynamics to me is the last really big hurdle. There's a couple quirky things with circular motion that you have to wrap around the brown, but by then you'll have the mechanics down so well, it should not be an issue. Apply the equations, recognize where your unknowns are, recognize how many equations you need to have to solve for that many unknowns. Why do 
Do your substitutions, plug in your numbers. Almost certainly. There will be a graph problem of some sort. Will it be an area under the curve problem? Maybe. Oh, the AP exam is a big fan of visual representations of data and your interpretation of them. So you'll almost certainly see one or more, at least in the misconceptual section, problems where you are presented with a graph and asked to interpret it or given some information and then giving a series of graphs from which to choose that will represent what they've just said. Understanding that velocity is the rate of change of displacement and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity is important. Mm -hmm. When are things zero? When do they cross axes? What are areas under? And the area under the curve of velocity is what? Yes. Over the same time interval. Example, a ball thrown in the air. I throw a ball up, it goes up, reaches the peak, comes down. At the peak, my vertical velocity is zero. This is all vertical. My vertical velocity is zero. My acceleration this whole time is negative g, right? This is the slope of that. This is the slope of that. My velocity has a negative constant slope. My acceleration is negative and constant. Slopes going this way, areas under curves going that way. If I pick a time interval from here to here, This height of negative g times this time interval gives me the area of this rectangle. The base here is a time interval. The height here is a acceleration unit, meters per second squared, for example. Meters per second squared times the number of seconds gives me meters per second. It has the dimension or unit of velocity. And if I actually calculate that area, it will spit out a number that is a velocity, meters per second. And over that time interval, since this is below the origin, below the axis, it's a negative value, it will tell me that my velocity has gone down by that much over that time frame. So if this spit out, just for example, that's negative 9.8, right? Let's say if I measured that for three seconds. A point from time two to time five. An interval of three seconds. That has a width of three seconds. And a height of roughly 10 meters per second squared. Three seconds times 10 meters per second squared equals 30 meters per second. That tells me that whatever value this is, it is 30 meters per second higher than that value. So maybe this is 20 and that's negative 10. Who knows? 
Let me just check. The area of this thing will tell me the height of that thing over that same interval. Similarly, that was three seconds, we'll call this more than two seconds. I calculate the area under that curve, which is a little trickier because I got a little rectangle area, a little triangle, a little triangle piece there that I have to calculate. But this area, which is above the axis, it will tell me how much my displacement has changed over that one second. If I calculate that area, I'd have to know that value and that value, right? To calculate that total area, I have an area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle, add those two together, that'll give me the total area, or the total, yeah, the total area of that thing. That area is going to be a time times a length per time, or a length. Velocity is meters per second, time seconds. That's gonna give me some number in meters, which will tell me how much my displacement changed over that same time interval. So even though this is curved and weird, and I'm not sure what to do with that, it will tell me that this value here is higher than that value here by that amount. I would not inflict this on you until you've had calculus, except that it's on the AP exam sheet. This makes way more sense once you've had calculus. It's, it's eligible to be on the test. It is an AP question. I've seen several of them. It is likely to be one question on the entire AP exam, but it's possible. So I'm neglecting you if I neglect this. Okay. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes. I'm only gonna do that file that's kind of huge. I wasn't streaming, which like I normally do it automatically upload, so I have to find some place to stash it. I'm sure that file is not gonna transfer over a text message. <laughs> Google Classroom. Yep. When I, when I do Google Classroom on my laptop, it has a record function that I can start and then it uploads it to Google somewhere and then I can send a link. Mm -hmm. Which is what I did with a couple guys that were out last week. Um, I'll, I can make it work on my iPad for some reason. If you needed to focus on something, I would focus on the ballistics problems and the misconceptual concepts. If you have a relative speed problem, it will be only one. If you have an area under the curve problem, it will be only one. Even on the AP exam, you're likely to have only one of each of those. Because there's a lot of ground to cover in the AP exam. Where did this come from? Sleep on your book, sleep learn by osmosis. Yeah, if you were dead serious when you said that. Yeah. Who said that? I don't know, but I wasn't um, here, so I have no idea. <laughs> Dr. Backley now. You haven't heard of it? Yeah. It was two, two years ago last year? It was yeah, I wasn't fresh for that. It was ours. Was well, this is the downward teacher we had for like two weeks? We literally, all the girls were crying. No, it was the, um, not it was because it was two and biology. And, yeah. It was actually like, I mean, I, I press you guys hard, but I try to help you. I try to. No, you're nice. I try to point you in the right direction. <laughs> no, he was just like. Y'all don't understand what I'm teaching. I'm like, did you just open up my mumbling the whole time? And you just stand and yell at us and then like say so. Like, Get it, my toesis. Don't step on my toesis. <laughs> it was weird because he'd like yell at us, but then he joke with us. And like, All right. Any questions, Texas?